to make the painting stand out, they, had, they, they still had um, another technique, which is called detouring, which we, we find all along the best animals, the best representations, with a little bit of flint, they would scrape the outside, creating a white effect, and then the images seem to stand out. Inside, and we find that again and again and again. Also, what we find is what specialists call stump drawing. To give relief inside the head or the body of the animals, they would they would smudge the paint, you know, either with a hand or with a, a, a piece of hide, um, to, to, give it, to give it relief, to give shading inside the body of the animal. And that is not uh, frequent in prehistoric art. In Chauvet, we find it very, very often. And also, there is something important, it's perspective. Uh, at that time, they used perspective. They put uh, the, the, the horns of some animals, like rhinos, or the bodies of the, some animals, or the legs, um, the front legs and the hind, and, and the hind legs, etc., in spatial perspective. So when you read in art history book that spatial perspective was invented in the Renaissance, uh, I used to say that to my students, uh, no, it was reinvented, and it was reinvented a number of times. But the first time we find it is in Chauvet, and that is something important. Why is it the first time? Because, and that is the last main point, because in Chauvet, the dates we have are incredibly old. When we made radiocarbon, we had radiocarbon datings, you know, of charcoal on the ground or the charcoal with which they made the drawing. I did not personally, uh, I was the one who took uh, the samples and I sent them to the lab. And, uh, and, and, and I was expecting something in the 20,000, you know, something like Lascaux, perhaps 20,000. And I remember telefo telephoning uh, after a few months. Uh, the woman at the lab, my colleague, who's in charge of it, and I said, when are we going to have the results? And she said, we have the results. We've had that um, for, for a week or so. And I said, why didn't you tell me? And she said, well, they're not exactly what you expected. Nobody likes that. <laughs> so I told the woman, I said, well, so they're younger, they're younger. And they said, no, 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 they're older. I said, fine. <laughs> and she said, yes, but they're a lot older. And I said, come on, what do you mean a lot older? I said, yes, we've got dates around 32,000. So I said, 32,000? So I said, that's impossible. You know, that was my gut reaction. I said, that's impossible. 32,000, an art which is so sophisticated. Because then, that was in 90, at the beginning of 1995. And then the current paradigm was that, at first, when people started making drawings, it was pretty crude, you see. And then, over the thousands of years, they got better, you see. And then it culminated in Lascaux about 20,000 years ago. And so I was told that those paintings, which are fully as good as Lascaux with spatial perspective and, and, and everything I've been telling you, were at least 12 years old, uh, 12,000 years older than Lascaux. And something crossed my mind, the German statuettes. Because in Germany, some statuettes in ivory, about 20 of them, now there are more, there are like nearly 30, uh, had been found in various uh, shelters, in three different shelters. And they were in that time range. And everybody thought it's so strange because those German statuettes were quite good. And so some people had argued that people had invented carving, sculpture, before painting into dimension and they had, that they had achieved uh, excellence in carving before achieving excellence in painting in two dimension. And then I thought, they're German statuettes. And I, I, I knew about them, I had seen them in museums, 
And I remember, oh, wow, but the German statuettes, also we have the formidable animals represented. The lions, the rhinos, the mammoths, and the bears. You see, so that meant that at a very early period, these people had, uh, had some beliefs who changed over the thousands of years. That meant also that the evolution of art was not gradual, that it went, there were some heydays and there were some periods of decadence, of course. Um, and uh, now we know that it's even earlier than that. It's even earlier than that because radio carbon dating has been proved to be uh, to rejuvenate the dates. It's always too young. Radio carbon dating is too young. So now specialists uh, have evolved what they call a calibration curve, which means that a date, for example, 30,000, in fact, you should add 4,000, something like that, to be in a calendar date. So at 32,000, that means between 36 and 37,000 in real years. You see, so this is the oldest uh, representative art with so many animals, etc., that we know of uh, now. So you see how important the Chauvet cave is because it changed our conception, the world's conception of the evolution of art.